unwavering moral principle throughout my life has been promoting equality and respect for all. My family, friends, colleagues and students can easily attest to this. People who have known me for decades and I remain deeply disturbed by the allegations against me. I am innocent and these allegations are baseless. Over a year before I was charged, a French journalist informed me that I was under investigation for this horrible act. Despite this troubling news, I remained in Ottawa. I did not flee and I was not afraid to confront all accusations to clear my name. Canada's extradition law gives enormous advantages to foreign countries at the expense of Canadians. According to Dr. Gary Martin, a leading Canadian extradition expert, extradition law is the most unfair process in Canada. The Canadian court presumes Francis evidence is reliable despite its fatal flaws. The key evidence against me, shoddy handwriting analysis, was admitted as evidence. This is despite the powerful testimony of three leading handwriting experts who demonstrated that the analysis is totally flawed. Moreover, my palm prints and fingerprints do not match those of the suspect. Yet this information was excluded by the court and was not considered. Many ask, why bother to fight the expedition? Why not go to France, face trial and clear my name? Unfortunately, under France's anti-terrorism laws, I will face charges based on secret intelligence that I cannot challenge. Human Rights Watch has documented the use of secret intelligence in terrorism cases in France. Moreover, my ability to challenge the handwriting analysis will be severely restricted. This is confirmed by the French legal experts consulted by my lawyer. I reiterate, I am innocent of the charges against me. I will take every legal opportunity to clear my name and I look forward to the day in which I can reclaim my life. I intend to continue my fight in the court and look forward to the Canadian court rectifying this injustice. Finally, I am deeply thankful to my lawyer, Mr. Don Bain. I also thank my family, friends and supporters who have stood by me during this most difficult time of my life. May justice and truth prevail. So we're gonna we're gonna take some questions now. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stand at the podium. I'll take questions, and uh, just because the mic is in the middle, so it's, we kind of have this musical chairs thing going on. So I'll stand here and I'll take three questions. We'll take three at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Darn. So we'll just wait till everyone's at the table. So we'll try our best to be heard. So if, if there's a problem with the sound, just let us know. Uh, so I'll take a question here in black. What's that? Okay, so a question here. Any other questions? In green and then in blue. Are we ready up here? And if you'd like to ask a question in French, that's fine. I will just translate it for the speakers. Okay. So, uh, here in black. Yes, uh, my name is David Julian Whiteman. I'm uh, uh, a publish X-ray magazine. And my question uh, is specifically to Don and others. Um, what is the possibility and the likelihood of this case ending up in the Supreme Court? And, and, and if that would be something that we would like to see happen? The Supreme Court started the ball rolling with Ferris. The intention of the Supreme Court was to stop extraditions on unreliable evidence. Interpretations of Ferris have taken us circularly back into extraditions 
on unreliable evidence. So it looks to me that the case is probably destined for the Supreme Court of Canada. Next question. Can you uh, the process of where it goes Well, it's very hard to predict a timeline. If I was asked at the start of this case in December of 08 when the authority to, when the record of the case was certified, how long it might take, I might have guessed a year, 15 months, and this is what, the middle of 2011, three calendar years later. But there is bail application to be heard in the Court of Appeal. There's communications with the minister seeking to make submissions to have the minister intervene to prevent an unfair trial, to prevent a surrender if there's going to be one, as there appears there will be. Um, there are, uh, then if the minister does not uh, accede to those requests, and historically the minister hasn't been too sympathetic to those kinds of uh, uh, submissions. The matter goes before the Ontario Court of Appeal uh, and uh, it will take some time to compile all the materials and record. Uh, there is, as some of you may know, we last week, in addition to the leading experts we have, we now have experts in the French legal system who are prepared to say Madam Bassotti's report is completely unreliable. Um, and we have to get that evidence in a form we can attempt to submit it to the Minister and the Court of Appeal. Um, so it's very hard to predict timelines. Um, after a decision of the Court of Appeal, and this is a case that one may suspect the Court will give careful consideration to, um, there may be an application by either side uh, for leave to the Court of, uh, Supreme Court of Canada, and that takes time. The Court doesn't always grant leave. However, there are issues identified here by the extradition judge, and most pointedly the one about this is a weak case in which conviction, assuming a fair trial, is unlikely. That is exactly the standard that British Columbia uses pursuant to a case called Graham, the British Columbia Court of Appeal decided, that says there ought not to be an extradition if that is the nature of the extradition case. So Dr. Diab today would be walking a free man in Vancouver had this case been conducted there, and in Ontario he is behind bars. That's a situation that's simply untenable in Canada. The Canadians are subjected to totally different standards depending on where they live. I would suspect that would attract the attention of the Supreme Court of Canada. Edward? What do you feel or anticipate what will happen in the next month? Well, we are here uh, to attempt to prevent that trial in France because by its very nature, we use, the use of this unsourced intelligence it will be unfair. France has been criticized by the international community and is currently before the European Court of Human Rights for violating Article 6 of the European Convention on uh, Human Rights, the fair trial right, for running terrorist trials based on this secret anonymous intelligence. And so we're not holding out hope that we can change the French trial system. They seem happy with that system. Uh, England studied it and firmly rejected it, saying you cannot possibly make a fair trial out of that because you can't know it or challenge the intelligence. So the battle is really here in Canada seeking justice and pointing out that this can't possibly be amenable to a fair trial. Today, as opposed to the week 
this one from the Supreme Court? Yes, they're going to have to clarify this. Which, which approach they endorse? The Graham approach? The Anderson approach? Or something they restructure? And very often the Supreme Court is creative in uh, coming up with a solution that meets the circumstances. You never give up hope, but you have to be a realist doing what criminal lawyers do. We were, I was, not personally hopeful ever since the decision on the handwriting. Because the handwriting is the fulcrum on which this case turns before us. Even the Attorney General agreed with that. Our view was the handwriting has no business before this Canadian court. It is clearly unreliable. Ferris in the Supreme Court says no Canadian should be extradited on unreliable evidence because that's unconstitutional. But we've come to a point where successive incremental eating away at that judgment has led us to a point that Canadians are being extradited on clearly unreliable evidence. And that's why I said uh, when I started this uh, press conference that, uh, regrettably, uh, this case in particular demonstrates the unfairness of the Canadian law. So I have to say to you, I, did, I had no unrealistic hopes. Well, Hassan, as I said to an earlier question, has a kind of a dignity that it is clear He's almost prepared for anything. Uh, I was rather more hopeful that we had made a small and I thought a reasonable request that it go over one week. There was ample judicial authority in the Court of Appeal decision in Schreiber for doing that, and Hassan was denied that. That was disappointing. One of the other things which is terribly disappointing about the fact that while well, Hassan has been on bail, He's had to pay to be on bail, upwards of $2,000, sometimes more, a month for the electronic uh, bracelet which monitors him. Unlike all other electronic bracelet uh, cases, such as the security certificate cases, where that cost is borne by the government, Hassan Diab and his partner Rania actually have to pay thousands of dollars a month so that he can have that bracelet around his ankle and monitor him. So that's just one more insult to the injustice that uh, Mr. Diab faces. This Thursday or next Monday? Probably this Thursday. In Toronto. And I should add that I made copies for members of the media of the um, request we made to the judge this morning of uh, the report he should make to the minister, which kind of outlines uh, many of the injustices here that will lead to a fair trial if the minister doesn't address them. So those, those are available to members of the media who want them. is not a trial 
and it's got to be quick and over quick, lends itself in a complicated world to very superficial looking at things. And that has evolved, as cases have evolved into complicated intelligence investigations, uh, into not really wanting to take the time to look at them and sacrificing rights on the altar of expediency. So take two more questions to direct and then we'll wrap things up. Any more questions? Okay, so if you want to pick up a document here that was impressed with the document that Mr. Bain was talking about, but there are also the DVDs and the video statements that you can grab at the door. I remember the support of making those handing those out. And if you haven't got any information, you can also have them at the door. Thank you very much for coming today. That's a good point.